Quick note before we start this lesson. The two lessons after this one on markup languages will cover the theory of style sheet languages and programming languages. When I was a coding bootcamp instructor, one of the big mistakes I noticed my beginner students making was that they failed to separate these three groups of languages in their mind. A lot of people think that learning to code only involves learning one language, usually a programming language like Python, Java, or C++. That's a misconception. Web developers and most programmers need to know many languages. It's okay if you didn't know that, that's why I wanted to bring it up now before we really dive into all three of these. Each one is going to have its own purpose, and most of these languages are pretty basic, so don't worry that this is going to take a super long time. You'll know all the important stuff about HTML, our markup language, and CSS, our style sheet language, within a few hours of lessons. JavaScript, our programming language, is a little more involved, and that might take longer to learn, but we'll have the entire rest of the course to practice that together after this unit on HTML and CSS. Okay, let's get into this lesson on markup languages. Our markup languages are used to control the structure, presentation, or description of data. We've already used one called HTML. It stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and we'll learn a ton about it in many of the lessons of this unit. There's other common markup languages though, like LaTeX, which is usually used for scientific papers, and XML, short for Extensible Markup Language, that's usually used for storing and transmitting data. Don't worry about memorizing those, we're only discussing it here so that you understand that there are many different markup languages. So why do we need to structure data? Because it's hard to understand data without the structure from a markup language. Take a look at the text on the left of this page. We have some unstructured text in the English language. There's no periods, there's no commas, there's no structure. It's a lot harder for us to read than the structured text on the right of the screen. There we have periods, we have commas, we have question marks and exclamation points and colons. All of that adds structure. The markup languages that we code in are going to act similarly to the question marks, periods, and commas of the English language and allow us to structure our data in a more usable format. So we know what markup languages are and why they're useful. Where do we use them? Well, pretty much everywhere when it comes to computers. Web pages on the internet use HTML. Our web browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, and Safari read that HTML and turn it into the nice looking web pages that we see on the screen. Book, paper, and essay editing software use many forms of markup language, including the three we mentioned as examples. Operating systems such as Microsoft Windows can have custom functionality added to them using markup languages and desktop and mobile applications can use markup languages to structure the app's pages that the users interact with through the touch screen or the mouse. So how do all these markup languages actually work? Well, we insert a set of symbols around or between data, and we did that already in Replit with our HTML. These symbols are going to vary depending on the markup language. They might be characters of the alphabet, digits, non-alphabet, non-digit characters like the left arrow and the right arrow that we used with HTML. In the English language, our symbols would be things like periods or commas. In the HTML example on this slide, we have the left arrow, the right arrow, the slash, and the H1 text between the left and right arrows. Not all markup languages are going to look like this. Remember, each one will be different. For example, on the left, you can see some HTML and LaTeX markup. They look very different. On the right-hand side of the screen, we see the styled and displayed versions of that markup. Those styles depend on the web browser or computer program that's reading the markup. In fact, once our text has been marked up with a markup language, we can style it to look however we want with something called style sheet languages. And that's our next lesson. So let's learn how to make our data look nice now that we've given it structure with a markup language.